All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. So tonight, we're going to be closing out a what's been a month-long Bible study, and that is community. What is a community? What is, what is a Christian community? What is community in general? What does that mean? We've been talking about this for the past month in the Bible studies, if you were a part of that. I do appreciate the input, and we've learned quite a bit. So I wanted to take a moment tonight and talk about some of the different things that we've that we've that we've discussed, some of the different things that we've learned about, and what this word community means. And so we're going to start. If you want to open up, we're going to start in Hebrews chapter ten, verses twenty-four and twenty-five. That's Hebrews chapter ten, verses twenty-four and twenty-five. First, we'll get some music, and then we'll jump into it. If you'll bow your heads, we'll pray in, and then we'll get started here. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we want to thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for bringing us together in this online community. Lord, we thank you for helping us and guiding us, all the provisions, all the protection. 
Lord, we ask that you just bless this message. Let it be your words, your will, what you want us to understand about this particular message. Lord, we ask that there not be any any bias and self-interest involved in, in any of this message. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> again, the topic... The topic is community, and and we've been we've been talking about this in the the Bible study for the past month. Um, that's been the topic. It's also been the topic of the devotionals um, at at my place of, of work, which is a, a, a Christian ministry as well. So we've learned we've learned some things. We're going to share some things. We're going to talk about some things. We're going to discuss some things. So, again, we're going to start in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25. I'm going to go ahead and read that. And it says, And let us not be... Excuse me. Let me start over. Let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other all the more as you see the day drawing near. This particular verse is talked a lot about whenever it comes to going to a church. It's used a lot whenever it's talked about a community. It's used a lot to talk about going to a church. I'm going to I'm going to talk about this a little bit more. It says let us let us be concerned about one another in order to promote love and good works, not staying away from our worship meetings as some habitually do, but encouraging each other all the more as you see the day drawing near. It says that we are to meet together to encourage one another, to love one another, to build each other up, to to keep each other going. Encouraging. That can be done in numerous different ways and numerous different different aspects of that. We are supposed to meet together. Somehow, some way. Whether that be walking down the street and discussing discussing God and encouraging someone in their walk with God. We're going to get into that a little bit more. But yes, we are to meet with other believers and worship together in some facet, in some way. Let's turn now to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. Then fear came over everyone, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as anyone had a need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple complex and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with a joyful and humble attitude, praising God and having favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to those who were being saved. Here it says that, that, the, that they, were, they, were, they were together. They were meeting together. They were, they were helping one another out. And it does say that, they, that every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple complex. So what I want to ask on that, whenever that is used to talk about going to church, and that is used, how many of those that are that are are pushing that you go to church 
as part of your community, are going to a church building every single day. Because you can't have one and nitpick and pick which piece of what you want to have. It says here that they were devoting themselves to going to the temple complex. The temple complex, not not, not the same as what we have today. They were in they were in Jerusalem here. And they were going to the temple complex and going from house to to house. You also have to remember that, that whenever we talk about this, whenever we're talking about community, we're talking about all different aspects of going to, to church, of, of meeting together in a, in a worship meeting. The worship meetings were not just happening only in the temple complex. The worship meetings and the breaking of bread was happening from house to house. A lot of the early churches, especially during the, pro the persecution of Christians in Rome, a lot of the churches were either meeting from house to house secretly or in caves secretly. It was not going to the temple complex whenever the persecution started because they couldn't, otherwise they would have been killed. In China, still to this day, it is illegal to have a church building in China. Are you saying that they do not have community whenever they meet underground in, in underground bunkers and are hiding in the walls as the Chinese government comes in and shoots the place up and they're praying to God and praising that they are there to suffer for Christ? Are you saying that they are not meeting together properly? So what is community? What is what is community in general? There's many, 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 many worldly communities out there. And we could name off several right now. I'm sure you've got a couple on your mind that call themselves a community that most certainly are not doing good things. They say that they're there to care for one another, but in all actuality, it's one of the most, the one that's on my mind, is one of the most toxic communities that exists. Suicide rates are the, among the highest in said community because they are toxic. There are many other toxic communities that exist. Many communities, whether it be a sports community, whether it be a, a drinking community, whether it be a whatever, there are many different communities out there that say that they are there to help one another, but truly are not. That Hebrews verse in 1024 in says to encourage one another, to stir one another up, to build each other up, to hold each other accountable, etc. That's what community is. Community is actually being there for one another, Yes. Loving one another. Yes. Encouraging one another. Yes. Building up, which part of building up is also holding each other accountable when someone does something not good. You can't build up with bad pieces. I work in... in, in maintenance and facilities and things of that nature. If I don't have, if I've got a rotten piece of wood, I can't really build much with it. So I have to use, I either have to get a new piece of wood or cut out the rotten piece of that. Maybe, maybe I cut the rotten piece out to use the rest of it. That's part of holding each other accountable is taking some of the rotten pieces out and, and going, hey, sharpening one another. Sharpen one another as I'm wearing the shirt. As I am literally wearing the shirt, we, ha we are to sharpen one another. Let's turn now to Romans chapter 12, verses 4 through 6. Probably going to read a little bit more of this, but we're going to start there anyway. Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 4. Still speaking on community here. Now we, now as we, have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way 
we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. I'm going to stop there for just a second. We are many parts of the one body. And when we're talking about the body and the, and the body of Christ, that is the church. Each one of us is a member of the body of Christ. We each have a role to play. You don't have a member of your body that does not have a function. Your little toe is very important to balance. Your big toe, very important to balance and walking. The brain, the lungs, the eyes, all of these different parts have a function down to the little toe. And we're individually members of one another. We have to come together. Agreed wholeheartedly with that. We are to come together with one another. But each one of us has a role to play. And as we continue in verse 6, I'm going to keep reading here. It says, according to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to the standard of one's faith. If service, in service. If teaching, in teaching. If if exhorting, in exhortion. If giving, with generosity. Leading, with diligence. Showing mercy, with cheerfulness. I'm actually going to keep reading because I love this chapter of Romans. Verse 9. Love must be without hypocrisy. Detest evil. Cling to what is good. Show family affection to one another with brotherly love. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack diligence. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be in agreement with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for his wrath. For it is written... Vengeance belongs to me, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing, you will, be, you will heap fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. He literally li just laid out, full on, literally just laid out what a good Christian community should look like. He literally laid out what church should look like. What Christians should look like. What we should be like to one another. He just laid it all out right there. That is what it means. But before that, he talks about each one of us has a part. Each one of us has a part in this whole body. <coughs> <coughs> He literally just laid out that each one of us has a part to play in this one body. That we are to come together. Now we should come together and do these things that he listed in verses 9 through the end of chapter 12. We should be doing all of those things. But each one of us has a different part to play in said community. Not everyone... It's mentioned numerous different times. Not everyone should be a teacher. Not everyone should be a preacher. Not everyone should be a pastor. Not everyone should be a chapel. Not everyone should be a deacon. Not everyone should be a bishop. Not everyone should be this. It goes through and lists that not everyone is going to have the same gift because if everyone had the same gift, there would not be room for these other body parts to come together to make it all work as one. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. Again, we are talking about the diversity in the body, but the unity in said diversity. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31. It's a lot to read here, but we're going to get through this. It says, For as one, for as the body is one, and has many parts, and all the parts of that body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. 
For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. So the body is not one part of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, in spite of the... Uh, in spite of this, it still belongs to the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. In spite of this, it still belongs to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed each one in the parts in one body, just as he wanted. And if they are all part of the same Excuse me, if they were, and if they were all the same parts, excuse me, where would the body be? Now, there are many parts, yet one body. So the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. Or again, the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. But even more, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are necessary. And those parts of the body that we think to be less honorable, we close these with greater honor honor and our un and our unpresentable parts have better presentation but our presentable parts have no need of clothing instead god has put the body together giving greater honor to the less honorable so that there would be no division in the body but that the members would have the same concern for for each other so if one member suffers all the members suffer with it if one member is honored all the members rejoice with it for you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. And God has placed these in the church. First apostles, second prophets, third teachers, next miracles, then gifts of healing, helping and managing of varying different kinds of languages. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all do miracles? Do all have the gifts of healing? Do all speak in, in other languages? Do all interpret? But desire the greater gifts. And I will show you an even better way. We are the body. Each one has a different role, but we are to come together. Not everyone, not everyone is an apostle, not everyone is a prophet, not everyone is a teacher, not everyone does miracles, not all have the gifts of healing, not all speak in other languages, not all interpret. But each member each part of that can come together as one and work together in unity even though we are different. So, still talking about community coming together. Talking about church and church community. What is church? What is church? We're talking about community, and when we talk about community, church gets brought up. Church buildings get brought up so, so often. And this is a huge debate, and something that I learned a lot of, a lot have an issue with an online church. There are many that have an issue with what we are doing. But what is a church? Is a church a building? No, and, then, and you know, I just before I even started this sermon, I was I was going through and looking at some different verses and doing some different research right before I started this, and I listened to an eight and a half minute message from a guy online that was that was really realistically kind of bashing online churches yet again, and was saying that 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 it is not bringing people together in a community, it is not doing these different things, and nobody, nobody, as he says. He said, nobody is saying that church is a building. That argument is a straw man argument. Da, 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 da. So why is it that when we, when we talk about community, why is it that when we, when we talk about coming together in different ways that it always comes back to you should be in a building? If you're, not saying, if you're saying that church is not a building, then why are you so focused on that aspect? If you know that church is not a building, then why are you so focused on bringing people into a building? Is it so that you have more people in the seats so that you can get more of a tithe? Are you worried about growing people? Are you worried about growing the congregation in the manner of growing the number of butts in seats? Or are you wor more worried about growing the congregation, each individually growing stronger and growing closer in their walk with Christ? 
Which manner of growing your congregation are you truly concerned with? And they say that, that what we do here lacks community. And while I agree that there are many, many online churches that are absolutely heretical, I've seen numerous quote-unquote online churches that are heretical. I've seen many that do not offer any sort of community where you're literally just watching a, a, a sermon and that's all that this particular church offers is what, clicking on a link to watch a YouTube video. That's all it offers. Nothing more. I've seen a lot of these things that are heretical and don't offer community with online churches. But how many church buildings do the same exact thing? How many heretical church buildings do we have out there? You can name off a bunch of different televangelists right now that are absolutely and 100% heretical. You can name off a bunch of different churches. And I've talked to a lot of people that go, members, these members of, of these very large church buildings, these very, very, very large church buildings that did not feel like they were part of any sort of community, that they were lost in the crowd because it was so large. I've talked to people that go to small churches, to smaller churches that feel like they're not part of the community. I'm going to talk here in a minute about some of the people that actually come to our Bible studies. See, we, we do we do a weekly Bible study as well here. It's not just preaching on Friday night and preaching on Sunday morning. We also do a Bible study every week on Wednesday. You click on the link on Facebook, you're taken into a, into a Zoom-like meeting where we see each other face-to-face. -face. It's online, but we see each other face-to-face, -face, and we do a Bible study. And we talk to each other, and all of the people that show up to the Bible study, I talk to on a regular basis, even though I have never met face-to-face -face one particular member of the Bible study. He lives in Kansas State. A lot of what we are getting for this particular sermon, as I said, we were talking about this for a month, so a lot of what I'm actually speaking on is verses and topics that were brought up during this, we this, this weekly Bible study that the other members of the Bible study were leading, rotating from week to week. Growing them and helping them grow and do their own research and get closer to God in their own walk as they're getting ready for this Bible study as well. So let's talk a minute about some of the different members of, of this Bible study. And I've gotten permission from each one to, to, to share a little bit. One in particular is a truck driver. He drives semis. He has tattoos all over his arms. Whenever he goes to a lot of church buildings, first thing he feels, and he straight out said this, first thing he feels is every eye staring at him because he has tattoos. He's young, and he has a lot of tattoos. So if he, go, he, he said if he goes to a church building that is full of especially older people, they all start, turn and start giving him weird looks. Whether that be his own his own image or not, that's how he feels, is that he's not welcomed as part of that community. He joins us every most weeks, as long as he can, from his truck at a truck stop. He led the Bible study and talked about how he didn't feel like he was part of a lot of communities in the churches that he tried to go to, and that's what pushed him away. That's a big reason why he walked away for a while, was because the community did not accept him as how he felt. Another that I still have yet to meet face to face in physical person works two full time jobs to help support his stepchildren that are no longer actually his stepchildren. They're from a previous marriage that he's still working two jobs to try to help out and take care of. 
He works two full-time jobs. Both of those in their current work environment makes it hard, makes it makes it a little bit hard to even get to a regular church on a Sunday, and would make it extremely difficult to then also be a part of all the different small groups that are offered in that manner. Makes it difficult for them. So where do they find their community? Where do they find their Christian community? I'm going to continue on. It's hard for them to be part of a Christian church building community. I'm not saying that online church is the end-all, be-all. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's not what I'm saying at all. Is it, is it good to have a church building in a central location, in a central place to meet and do these worship gatherings? Absolutely. Do I encourage you to go to a church building and find that community there? Absolutely. What I am doing here is trying to, as it says in the mission statement, is to stand in the gap for those that need a stepping stone, that need something, that are... that. Are, Jesus talks about, and, and, and so many different people talk about, meeting people where they are. This is trying to meet those people where they are. That is what we are trying to do here with this community, with this online community, with what we are doing here. It is trying to stand in the gap because there is a gap that is left with a lot of church buildings for those that cannot either cannot make it or have been de-churched by some of the heretical and some of the non-community aspects of church buildings. Those that have been de-churched. Let's go to uh, look, take another look at 1 Corinthians 12, 27. We just read part of that, but we're going to look at it again. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now you are the body of Christ and individual members of it. When we reference the church, when we reference the body of Christ. When we reference, when we reference the church, the first picture that comes into your mind is a building. Correct? Most of us, most of us, whenever the, the word is used, I'm going to church. It's a building. It's a specific building with a steeple and a cross on it, and you know, those are nice. Nothing wrong with that. But it says that we are the body of Christ and individual members of it. Again, a lot of the early Christians met in, in homes. A lot of the early Christians met in caves and secrets. A lot of the early, early Christians did not have, and again, still in China, do not have church buildings with the steeple and the, and the cross on top and the bell to ring people in and, and all these other little facets and the, the, the stained glass windows and all these other little things that we've, that we've come to picture when we think about church. We are said church. We. We each are individual members of the body of Christ. We are each individual members of the church. Not a building. While, again, it is good to have a central location for people to physically meet up with, that is absolutely great, please. That is, that is a great thing to have. It's also not necessary in order to be part of a community if you are doing so correctly. I do still, however, please do not twist this, I do still, however, encourage you to go to and be a part of a local church community. I highly encourage you, if you are able to, to be part of a local church community. 
meet with people, share the gospel, talk with other believers, meet with other believers, but also do so not just in the building. That is one of the other aspects of this. Is As we talk about community and we talk about going to church, hmm, you ever been outside of the church whenever it releases out there beside the highway, whenever that big church releases, and all the people, as soon as they get done with church, they're pulling out there, cutting everybody off, shooting the finger to one another, saying things they shouldn't be saying, and they just left this community. Walk the walk, don't just talk the talk. Church extends. If you are if you are individual members of the church, you just left a building, but you are still the church. You are still in church. I'm going to close this out with Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 20. Matthew 18, 20. Matthew 18, 20. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. Not where there's lasers in a smoke show. Not where there's pretty stained glass windows. Not where there's where there's the where there's a pastor that's running back and forth up and down the aisles. Not where there's there's a band that's on stage that is absolutely exhausted because they've played five shows over the weekend. Not where there's all these other aspects of things that we think of. Not where there's a rock concert going on. Not where there's somebody talking about how great they are. Not where you walk in and you're you're given given communion cups without ever having known anyone in there. That doesn't make it. Doesn't doesn't it doesn't doesn't make it. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am. Where two or three are gathered, there I am. I have held church, if you will, on a porch, talking to a couple of friends. Because we were discussing Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. We are we were three of us gathered in Jesus' name. That's church. When we do the online Bible study. We are gathered together, discussing the Bible, discussing God's Word, this, uh, enjoying each other's company in fellowship with one another. That's church. Looks like right now, at this very moment, I've got five different people that are watching, watching online with me. And you guys can comment. And I have my phone right here. If you comment, I will see you comment. But... Of those five that are on, I know I can see a couple of you guys that are on, like John and Paulo, Justin. I can see you guys on, and I talk to you daily. That's community. That's fellowship. I know who my congregation is. That's that's what we're supposed to do. You encourage me. I encourage you. We sharpen each other. We hold each other accountable. That is community. That is community. And you know, as we went through, I'm going to close with this last thought. As we went through this, um, this this monthly Bible study. This was the first month that we did rotating with other with the other members uh, leading the Bible study. And I gotta say, it was so encouraging to me to have them do 
such a great job in leading the Bible study, and and I was encouraged as they were encouraged in getting getting into it and looking and digging more and asking questions and digging more and and it helping each other to grow and walk. It was an amazing experience, and we're going to continue doing that. So if you would like to be part of the weekly Bible study, again, there will be a link that is posted on the Facebook, on my personal Facebook page, on the on the ministry's Facebook page. If you want me to send you a message whenever we are starting that, I can add you into that because I do that with the, with, the, with the other members that show up all the time. I send them a message with the link. If you want to be a part of that, please let me know. But I do still encourage you, I do still encourage you, if you can, if you are able to, to be part of a local church community. I, I, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all. In any way, I encourage you to, just as I encourage you to read God's word for yourself. Do not take anyone's word for it. Just read it for yourself. Any of the scriptures that I go over, that's why I pause whenever I give the chapter and verse, why I pause and why I usually say it two or three times. So that way you can turn there and read it for yourself as well. That's why I post the scriptures up there with the sermon. So that way you can look them up. If you didn't catch one, you can go back and pull it up, read it for yourself, flip through, pull up, however you want to go about it. Read it for yourself, please. A pastor is a human. A preacher is a human. We make mistakes. We get things wrong sometimes. Read it for yourself. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close out. If you will bow your heads with me, please. Dear Lord, we just come to you right now, Lord, and we want to thank you for this message, Lord. We thank you for the, the amazing community that you have brought together. Lord, we ask that you continue to, to help each individual grow as a member of the body. Lord, we ask that, that you just help guide us going forward each and every one of us in all of our endeavors. Lord, we ask that you help that you help all the members of this congregation. Lord, you know the situations that, that are going on, and Lord, we just ask that you help bring your peace into all of the different situations that are going on. And Lord, we ask for a restful night's sleep and a blessed tomorrow. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. With that, I will see you guys back Sunday morning, Sunday morning service, Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Wednesday night Bible study. Wednesday, the room starts at 6.30. Bible study begins at 7. The link's posted on my personal Facebook page, on the ministry's Facebook page. If you want me to send you a message, let me know. I will do that. Friday night lights, Friday nights at 8 p.m. Until then, I love you guys, and I will see you later. Glad you liked it, Justin. <laughs>